since the grass is always greener. We got the neighbor got a new dog. And so I guess Gus is, wants to meet a new dog who's more his size. This is the Dog Walk Chronicles. Hopefully I can take this opportunity to tell you today is December the 7th. The feast day of St. Ambrose. There were some other saints today. St. John the Silent. Uh, oh my gosh, so many saints. One saint got his hands cut off. Not by the Muslims this time. It was in the Diocletian uh, persecution. So in the 200s and 300s, somewhere in that area. Uh, there was a nun who didn't want to get married. And her father wanted her to. Well, she wasn't a nun then. And then she, um, he became convinced, I forget what convinced him, so many things. So look up December 7th. But right now, let's just talk about this amazing St. Ambrose. He was born of nobility. He was the brother, I've said this before, surround yourself with saints and you'll be a saint. Brother of St. Marcelina and St. Satyrus. Is that like a satyr? Um, he was educated. First off, he was born in 340 and died 340, the great Dodge Plymouth engine, uh, and died in 397. Couldn't fail to mention that. Uh, he was educated in the classics and Greek and philosophy, poetry. He was an orator. He was a convert. He was a governor of Milan. When the bishop of Milan died, there was such a dispute that uh, violence broke out and Ambrose went in and calmed the people down and they were so amazed, uh, so impressed with him, I should say, that they insisted on making him the bishop. Interestingly, he was only a catechumen, uh, hadn't even been baptized yet. So uh, he said, no, obviously, I, I, I'm not worthy of this, uh, blah, blah. And uh, when violence started, threatened to break out again, he relented and uh, basically to keep things the peace, uh, he accepted the bishop, uh, role of bishop of Milan. He, in three, in December 7th today, 374, when he was 34 years old, he was baptized, ordained as a priest and consecrated as a bishop all in one day. He immediately gave away all his wealth to the poor. He did it for the good that it did and as an example to his flock of how to live. Um, he was a noted preacher. He was a teacher. He was known as the... Uh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, he converted St. Augustine of Hippo. You've, you've heard that before. If you've listened to Augustine's story, you've heard about that. Gus, stop. Sit. Uh, he was titled the Honey-Tongued Doctor. He's one of the doctors of the church. Oh, by the way, just, uh, you know, on top of that. Uh, he fought heresies. He convinced Emperor Theodosius to do public penance for his sins. Now, remember... Many times, the church, the kings, the emperors uh, bristled at the thought that the church uh, would tell them what to do because they're the king. And so, you know, in sometimes if you had a good king or an emperor who understood his role, his, uh, his, uh, who understood who he is, a child of God first, and then to do what God asked them to do, and that would be like be a good, just king. Uh, but amazingly, the emperor, instead of, uh, you know, having him killed, repented publicly. That's humility. That's, that's amazing uh, in itself. Uh, again, the honey, the honey-tongued preacher, the honey-tongued, um, yeah, he was, uh, and because of that, uh, he is a patron saint of preaching uh, he, uh, he, is, he's, uh, he is one of four church doctors. He's called the honey-tongued uh, doctor because of his preaching and his speaking. Um, must have been. I read some of his uh, readings, and they were 
beautiful. I couldn't, I'm not going to repeat them because I didn't write them down. Uh, but one of them talked about just being silent when people are talking nonsense, like today. Sometimes it's just better to be silent than to engage them and get angry. What's always better to be silent than angry and, uh, and go bonkers because then that just sort of helps to prove, they think that proves them right. Oh, look, he's crazy. He must be wrong. But, uh, you know, in our today's, this transgender and all the other insanity that's going on, I mean, I found, read his readings. Uh, I just implore you to do that. Um, I was really felt they spoke for today. These particular snippets, one was part of a letter that he sent to someone. And uh, it was so appropriate for today even. Um, uh, because of his preaching, he is a patron of beekeepers, of bees, Gus, stop, I'm almost done. Candle makers, geese, honey cake, uh, learning. He's a patron of school children, police officers, starlings, which I wanted to look up. What's the story with starlings? Uh, he's represented, he hit one of his representations as well as having a dove and um, is uh, a baby with bees on his mouth. He was a friend, check this out, friend of St. Gregory the Great, St. Jerome, St. Gregory, doctor of the church, St. Jerome, uh, I believe he was the one who translated the Greek to the Latin Bible or something to that. Jerome is a ex major uh, lover and explainer and writer of the Bible. Uh, St. Augustine, of course, holy cow. He saw a vision of St. Martin of Tours burial. So that was at the same time as him, but he wasn't there, but he saw a vision of the burial. And he also found the relics of St. Protase, Protase and St. Gervais. Wait, Gervais. I thought it was Gervais, like Ricky Gervais. Anyway, St. Gervais. And he was led by a vision to their grave site where they didn't know where they were buried and they retrieved their relics. And that's a major thing because we're all about... Uh, the relics, um, the closeness to a saint. Uh, he knew those three. He, apparently, he knew Jerome. He knew Gregory the Great. He knew Augustine, obviously. So the more you, you, you put yourself near saints, the better for you. And relics are something that, uh, that was close. There's different degrees of relics, but something that's close to the person, whether... It would be their literal bones or a piece of their hair or a shirt that they wore or something that they touched. Uh, you know, so he found his two saints relics. He saw them in a vision, led the people apparently to where the, they didn't know where the relics because we, uh, we recognize, um, you know, the relics and their power. Remember, uh, Jesus's cloak was touched and a woman was healed. Peter's shadow went over someone and they were healed. So the relics, it just, it's, it's just logic. As always, the church's logic it just makes sense that the relics literally, uh, if a cloak or a shadow can do healing, then the relics, the, the literal body parts of a person obviously would be even closer than their coat to them. It's literally them. Uh, I wonder if you could put a relic up like the skull and have the shadow fall on someone and that could in theory uh, 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 ask God uh, to prevail in, in making a miracle. So anyway, St. Ambrose today of Milan, amazing, amazing, amazing. The, the representation of him, he looks like a monster. I mean, in a good way. I mean, he looks thick. He looks like, looks like a, like a, like a lime, like a short lineman, like a five foot ten, two hundred and seventy five pound monster. I mean, he looks like a Greek god. It's it's. Uh, I don't know if that's what he actually looked like, or if it's just so because he's so amazing that that's how he was represented in that picture. Uh, look it up on Ladate. Look up the other saints. Remember to pray for. Ask the saints to pray for us, and remember to pray for the souls in purgatory. St. Ambrose, uh, give us knowledge and wisdom. And read St. Ambrose. Look up his readings. 
read some stuff. Look up, look, yeah, just St. Ambrose. Go do it. Go do it now. But pray for the souls in purgatory.